We're still vassal sla slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Fucking naked.
Alex. He's receiving. This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help, we can tip the balance in our favour. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. By a chance to see the very last episode so? of Just the Job. Jesus. So At what? How's he doing? Dr. How should I know? What, well, you haven't heard from him? He's a wanted criminal, inside. Colin. So is my nan, but she never missed her birthday. Your grandmother's on the run, Colin. The yeah. Armed robbery, resisting arrest, double homicide of the same bloke. She's right off. <laughs> I hope he's all right, then. No. He's got this far, and your brother was fine. We're going in 10 seconds, everybody! I wonder what they're doing. Annoying him, probably. Not probably, definitely. Going in five, four, three. Good evening, this is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wall. Our top stories tonight. Future legend. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted multiple attacks across the territories. During the coordinated action, subsequently dubbed the Night of Fire, emergency services were kept busy at the agricultural centres, while a series of covert attacks were carried out freeing political prisoners, including former newsman Jeremy Donaldson. Nothing has been heard from the missing journalist since the violent Disrupt attack on his convoy six weeks ago. Donaldson was on his way back to Betterment after his notorious court appearance. All of us here at Channel One hope that wherever he is now, he's safe. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankby or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory grovelling zones. Advance have been quick to respond, saying if they would rather quit their cushy jobs to become nurses or teachers, they'll earn significantly more than they used to pay their own workforce. Thus far, no one has taken up the challenge. Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to Advance's radical policies today, as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass. Poor choice of words given recent history. And a few stories we've been following for a while reached their conclusions tonight. Swing low, sweet chariot. The national outbreak of low hanging testicular syndrome has been finally traced back to the activities of Remington's fist. What had at first seemed like a booming success for Sophia Remington's pet project has ended uncomfortably for men throughout the territories. A slightly tipsy Sophia, who resigned this morning, commented that the men should stop whinging before driving off so quickly that one photographer's foot and both of his nuts were run over in the kerfuffle after falling out of the bottom of his trousers. A painful end to a difficult reign for the youngest female CEO in history. Pass the salt. A concerning end to the tale of the trapped academics of Dante's Taint, as an image transmitted to the surface seems to show them cooking the captain of the rescue craft. After public indifference led to the mission's funding being slashed, Captain Audrey Aerospace was forced to wrestle the hastily constructed vessel through treacherous caverns to reach the stranded scientists. But on arrival, she found she hadn't been given enough fuel for a return journey. 
So it seems with their fate sealed, the shipwrecked scholars have reacted in the only reasonable fashion. Let's hope they've got enough croutons to go with their sailor suit. Man United, a happily ever after for Johnny Hamsleeves and partner and former teammate Eric Justin, who finally tied the knot this week. Speaking as the pair headed off for their honeymoon in Territory 15, Johnny acknowledged that there would be many in the football world who wouldn't accept his choice of partner. I think it's time people grew up, he said. Some people are ginger. Get over it. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Today is the day we take back control. Soon it will be time for you to help us again. Come out of your houses, block the traffic, bring the capital to a standstill. I've met so many of you in my travels up and down Territory 1. You always ask the same question, how can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when? But first, or, I'll tell you, look at them over there. Fine leader and a great man. The start of tonight's program is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor bastard. Uh, Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping her. Hello, Patrick. We're live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public ownership, you can't say anything these days. She's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. She's lost it, mate. She's I heard from an aide. That... Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. We've lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK, all right, it seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, I'm Megan. Patrick Bannon, and Patrick we are indeed live we are here. Indeed live. here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, Apologies but the any moment now, there. Julia Salisbury Julia will step out on stage behind me. Alex, both of you. The, the boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. Credit. You're going to have to do it on the fly. The for credit. goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. We can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. We can look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her dress. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. Five hundred days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are, not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, 
empathy and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> He always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. He always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. Famous for his potty mouth, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. He wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago. Moment for I was supposed ago. to give a speech, not unlike this one, actually. Like <laughs> Only I'd, um, actually. I'd spilt coffee I'd, um, all down myself. And I was young, nervous, desperate to be young, liked. And, nervous, and from behind me, I heard, Christ, Pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> and before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> That was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. That was the sort of man that Peter Clement kind, was. Kind, compassionate, kind, sensitive, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a brilliant natural thinker, leader, a natural leader, but mostly, but mostly, a good man. A good man. <laughs> mm. Mm. This glorious, this glorious and you, this shining beacon of... Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. Despite his accomplishments, despite the future he forged, the, the boundaries he pushed, the boundaries he pushed, to me, to me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. Cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the to Peter Clement Memorial, Memorial Garden. Garden. <laughs> Should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Now, Alex, control the message. Mom, we have to get you to safety. Come with us. I'm not leaving. I can't. Oi. Do you understand? The right to be here. Yes, yes mom. Mom. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Look at me. Look, look at me. Look at me. Stay with me. Help. Help me. Stay with me. We've got you. Anything? Yes. Yeah. Medics are coming. You sit down. No, I can't hear you. I'm from the National Nightly News. I need help now. Please. Stay with me. Julius Goldsbury! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people! Target armed. Target armed. Haven't you done enough? Look around you! This is what your precious freedom looks like, is it?
Hold on. Will you do it? Come on! No. Will you turn that off, please, sir? I said, please turn that off. Please turn that off. Shocking scenes from the capital there, exclusively on the National Nightly News. And our apologies to any of our viewers who might have found this evening's events upsetting. But at the National Nightly News, we believe in bringing you the raw, unedited truth as it happens. And we make no apology for that. We'll update you on the latest from this disrupt attack later in the programme. But when we come back, it's time for happier pursuits. And you know what that means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. We'll be back after this. Does anyone know if everyone's safe? That didn't go so well, Alex. But we can turn it around in the next segment. Special going out it's of business. Weekly event. Oh, for business deal. It's I was eating the other day. I say this eating now. I'm one. down an alley in a okay. dumpster, but that doesn't There's matter. A I found the outside. Forks. They've only been used once. I've licked them clean. You can get knives too. Buy a fork. Get a knife. Get a knife. Buy a fork. Forks. Knives. We don't have spoons. It's crazy Neil with another steal of a deal. We got sticks. We got sticks that do tricks. We got an evil child. This is my young niece, Felicia. Small, nimble, agile. She can get through a dog flap, cat flap, rabbit flap, rat trap, mouse trap. All you gotta do is feed her once a day. She'll eat anything. Scrap, food off your plate, food out the bin, dog food. This is a steal of a deal to have a family member stealing for you by crazy deal. We got sticks. Buy our sticks. Buy our motherfucking sticks. We've got empty toilet rolls. Some are crushed, some are squashed, some are ripped up, some aren't even cardboard. Some of them are just grit in a bag. We'll beat you in the Alex, sticks if you come during this next night. section, a cameraman working in the newsroom who's one of us is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. Come on down. It's crazy Neil with a begging appeal. Because there's been no bail for Neil. And have a crazy time with crazy Neil going out of business. Steal off a deal. Stick, you hear? With me, Welcome Megan back Wolf. to the National Library. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final shortly, episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. It, it connects there with people. You know, people it look at us and they say, those are real people struggling are with real, real problems. problems. Struggling with that's, real a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was really saying to my PA yeah, secretary I mean, I as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift <laughs> kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, um, um, my talent, my look. Wow. We really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. We have a lot to thank you You're welcome. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. We've just heard so well. our man's on camera four. So well. I have a real sense of responsibility now. Go back to the interview, Alex. Something precious, and that I should use that platform for good. Yeah, I think that's really important. That we should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So exactly I've decided it. to help so as many Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next you'll need to give them the go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Uh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, how many how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late thirties. Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a foot on in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're Normans, I presume so. Okay. Yeah, it's shocking to think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children 
I'm a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'm celebrity I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily so, uh, trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. Right. That was <laughs> Philippa Raiden sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything really in perspective. Clearly, everything not everyone else agrees. Clearly. But that's enough from me. Agrees. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. What a day! First to tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. Oh! By Saint Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirt bag! Oh, Laura, it's you. Oh, I thought Laura, for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's no, just me, a community not. cohesion it's officer, community responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course, I keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know, it's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three bars in a row, Alex. That will start the pencil movement. We might just pull this off. Push forward! Three bars, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! It looks heavy. They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Ripped for no reason. You missed it. It's no good. It looks it's like all those good. crucifix like classes those were a waste of time. <laughs> Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move. Oh, you're fucking us, Alex. <laughs> 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 Looks like all those lifting like all classes those were a waste of time. <laughs> it's too heavy, even for me, a strong and capable Why won't you help us? We're outnumbered, we're outgunned. What's wrong with you? Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Hi! Well done, Captain Evans. You're well so done, much stronger Captain than us. So Especially me, the us. weak old man. Me, it's the least the I could do for my it's community. The least I could do for my community. <sighs> no luck catching the little devil no then. Unfortunately the not. Devil, the ferret Unfortunately struck again not. last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he, he found that every morning. single stamp had been pre-licked. Pre God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, no decency. if we don't catch him before Sadly. tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Don't worry. Will we, Vicar? We no, no, no. Will we, no, no, no. Laura, tell me. Why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their the best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open! <laughs> Me! Blackout! Ah. It's the morning of the village fete, 
It's thanks to theatrical the convention. I sure hope everything convention. goes to plan. I sure hope oh, look! Plan. There's Mrs. Craven oh, setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. Shut down, Very to struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess. We'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. <gasps> Me? Have you been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you, the vicar. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it. You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I shouldn't have to work two days a week. <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> Which brings me on to my third clue. Which the vicar said that he had no more room no for jam. More room. Almost as if he'd had his Almost fill. Precisely. But you managed Precisely. to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! You did it, Captain. You could you say you it, ferreted Captain. him you out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. Let's go and have a party I am doing well. Garden. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. That was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! What a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place, eh? Yeah? Alex, this station is supposed to be unbiased. Your partisan behaviour will end up getting us taken into public ownership even sooner. Less revolutionary zeal. Do your job. And how progressive their policies are. Well, I was wrong. And I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. And to... to beg for your forgiveness. Last push, Alex. My parents are not We're closing in. My One of the guests in the last section is working with us. Happy. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If we do it right, the final orders will be given. But I we'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. So it's time. happening, Alex. Tonight we years, take it back. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. Policies born from absurd redistributive fantasies. I have whored myself out to the media to defend the indefensible. I have betrayed my parents. I see that now. Mum, Dad, I'm sorry. Our only hope, the only hope, now lies 
with disrupt. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome Later in this segment, we're hoping News. to be able to go Later back to Patrick segment, Bannon at the scene to of tonight's to shocking Patrick disrupt Bannon attack. Of tonight's but first, attack. I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the I'm smash hit musical the the Everyone Is Talking About. Musical, I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. The Novaries. Hello. Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. You poor unlucky chum Is it cancer? Worse of John With the baby How can this be? Oh woe is me Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms For the maximum of safety In our tiny flat We built a peaceful habitat Now our lives are fucked We're having a baby Now you can't have any wine at the club there won't be any time for foot rubs Now your hair will stink of weed And you'll start to disagree And forget about that holiday in Territory 3 No more waking up at half past ten In fact, you'll never really dare to good night's sleep again No more snap decisions to the one to a club You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub It comes from personal bumps Now when I take a sick day at home The parasite won't leave you alone How he's grown! We're a top priority I look after you And you look after me Ain't no trouble and strife We got a childless life Crazy. 
Amazing. The Novaries oh, there, amazing. treating us to their opening oh, number there. from treating Energy for a Childless number. Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the capital theatre district. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Come on, you got. Come on down. Let's go. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yes, yeah, used to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. Right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. How rude of me. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. Hi, Jim Blunt. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Jim Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Hello, used to be John. in the business professionally. My name's Jill with a J. And, and I'm Janet. With a J. I'm the youngest. And I'm Janet. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? I mean, what a coincidence, right? Uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning uh, with a J. With, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys! Oh Our names all begin with J! How uh, have we never noticed that? Uh, because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing, but we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe, as well as being friends, you're also couples in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. not exactly. Oh. I'm not married to him. Oh. I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. Oh, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Oh, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called my one. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. After <laughs> much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> and gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Right. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. So peaceful, no singing. Uh, this piece isn't peaceful. Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. It's about children. Mm -hmm. And why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Terrible problem. You understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Well, this isn't about me. So. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. Very <laughs> chatty tonight, dear. Usually chatty I'm the chatty tonight. one. Because You're the youngest, we know! You're it's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. I 
probably said too much already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might come to see it. <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that the children are a, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. We just want people to have the option of a happy child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to dip my toes into the aisles. Well, thank you so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The Nobel Prize. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Maggot. Thank you. This Maggot. is Patrick Bannon this reporting from the scene of tonight's Bannon devastating and, tonight's symbolic and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack, An attack this evening. which I myself attack, have been found myself, myself caught up in. I, I'm still a little dazed. And a little death, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs. Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave. No. No, there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation right. now? Are we safe? Is the situation uh, now? Are we safe? Uh, yes. Uh, the security yes, services uh, performed their duties the without hesitation, and, and I would like to assure the public that and although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, well, that's good news about the civilian. Oh, that's good news. Sorry, did you did you say no deaths? That's right. No, no death? civilian deaths. No, Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Oh, of course, the camera, there's the camera. Speak there, on, on the camera there. Speak there, on the camera. Stay at home tonight. Stay at home. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment. But, as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. Thank you, Prime Minister, Thank for, you. Those Prime Minister for those strong Back words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan now, in the studio with Megan Wolfe now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Night News. But before we go, one final thought. Throughout the programme tonight, we've been, throughout the programme tonight, we've been receiving reports of disruptive activities throughout the territory. Coordinated attacks, these terrorists are attempting to undermine Advance's vital work. However, sources at team headquarters have told us that this acid revolution was not only predicted, but allowed to happen. Our government have lured Disrupt out from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe. The military have been actioned and, well, it's pretty scary out there tonight. So stay at home and stay with Channel 1 because the team has assured this programme that the turbulence will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building a new future with equality, fairness and resources. My name is Megan. Let's make tomorrow. Let's make tomorrow. And we're out. We just threw up a bit. I've done it, Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Fight's jet at 9 o'clock. Time is great, sir. Mission to detonate. Commission granted, old friend. We are going to detonate. Look out of your window, Alex. See what you hope may happen.